is you, Dave, making that weird noise? I don't know what it is. It's not. I'm not. I've. I, I cannot hear a clicking sound in this house. So no, neither know. can I. But yeah, it's fine. You know, blame blame me, Dave. Like you always well, do. There wasn't a clicking noise until you turned up, and then there was a clicking noise. Yeah, uh, it's my dick. That's yeah, what it is. I mean, <laughs> call, I mean, call me Columbo, <laughs> but I kind of thought I'd worked it out as there was no clicking noise till you fucking turned up. You fucking slag. Shuffy's got a big dick. Shuffy's got, Shuffy's got, got a big, big dick. dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when Dave pulled down my trousers in front of... In <laughs> Those young children. <laughs> <laughs> Were you there, Kyle? Uh, no, yeah. no, first time I heard of this. <laughs> oh, yes. It's the right. most humiliating thing. What was... Who was there? It was like it was Andy's birthday, so like he had like all like even friends that weren't even, that I didn't even know. And it was same consolation. We all down my trousers later, I do. And because what I usually do is I, I, got I normally I normally wear <laughs> tracksuit bottoms without underwear. He <laughs> just blanked them down and fucking <laughs> up. And Shafi shined a, a whole a whole room of people he'd never met before. I wasn't invited to the party like I normally am not. And then what happened was that I showed up just to give uh, Andy his present. So basically, I came in for five minutes, bashed my dick, and then just left. <laughs> yeah, that's how a true player rolls at the party. Here he is, the Danny DeVito. You've started recording, haven't you? So yeah, that's, that's the right. intro part you can leave to, you can put in the, before the podcast starts. Okay. Everyone, I'm Shafi Malik, and you're listening to the Who Drop the Popcorn podcast. The premise is simple: one of us picks a film that we know none of the others have seen. The rest of the group watch the film, and we get together here to discuss it. Joining me tonight is Dave McHugh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, all right. Andy Newlands. Yeah, it's coming home. Minute, it's coming up. Yeah, coming home. Minute, yeah. <laughs> And all the way from the somewhat north of England, Kyle Hammond. It's tricky to rock around to rock around. That's right on time. It's gritty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, player, player. So wonderful. Oh my gosh. That's the best intro we've ever done. Here's your warning. We'll be going to heavy spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, we thoroughly recommend you watch the film before listening to this. This episode's choice is Dave's. Dave has chosen 1984's Paris, Texas. Directed by German filmmaker Wim Wenders and written by famous American playwright Sam Shepard. The film starts with Travis, played by Harren Dean Stanton, who has no recollection of his recent life, as found by his brother, played by Dean Stockwell. Slowly, Travis begins to locate the memories of the life he led and the fact he's walked out on his wife and child, and he embarks on a journey to reunite his family. So... Dave was over at my place uh, a few weeks ago, and then I asked him when he last saw Paris, Texas, and he says he's never seen it before. And then I asked him why he chose the film, and he said, because he's never seen it before. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Bastard. I forgot I confessed to under a breeder, drunken rage. Mm, Bastard. Bastard. So that's fine, but um, I'm going to break protocol, and instead of asking you why you chose the film... I'm going to ask Dave, you've set yourself a challenge. Yeah. Describe the challenge to the listeners of the podcast, what you've done here. Yeah. yeah. So it's nothing too amazing, but I, I want to watch 333 films this year that I've never seen before with the slight, slight caveat of if I have next to no recollection of them, that's okay. So I'd recommend, I'd say probably do about 300 new films with 33 that I have no recollection of. So it was on my list. So what is informing the films that are on this list? Ooh, good question. I'm literally just discovering them. There's nothing, there's nothing to it. There's no formula. I'm just looking at directors, looking at actors. 
have you got a whole list of 333 at the moment? Or yeah, is it I, I've, a- I've actually exceeded it. I'm up to about 354. And I'm worried that certain films I won't be able to get through or I won't be able to find or stream or even buy on a Region 2 DVD player. So I've kind of overcompensated for that. But, yeah, I've got about 354 films, I think, here is the last count. And I'm up to 112. So I'm behind schedule, to say the least. You can catch up this week, Dave, and next week. Exactly. Isolation, babies. Isolation. Dave's having to isolate because he's been contact traced, basically. Exactly. And sorry, you, you, something you missed out is that you're writing a letterbox review on each film that you've... Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I'm sharing that with us on a, on a sort of WhatsApp group. So, yeah. Now that you're kind of more than a third of the way through them, what has, has it sort of changed your palette in kind of watching these films? Or is it, is it sort of... What, how has this sort of changed the way you sort of watch films or your sort of taste in films? Wow, good question. Slightly. Andy, should we go get a drink? I've just bought myself a double vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I think watching Free Colours Red for Free Colours Rouge or Twa French Word for Colours Rouge may change my entire brain, basically, and I've become a different person after watching Free Colours Red. So, apart from, yeah, so that's changed the way I watch films, I think. And maybe mid nineties as well, because that's now I really, really appreciate coming of age films. So yeah, Free Colors Red and Mid Nineties has changed the way I watch films. Okay. So now we can hand over to Andy to recap this film. Yes. Yes, this film. Um just gonna pause to edit whilst Kyle pours himself a drink to get over that insight into dave's life and good luck with that challenge dave and hope that your responsibilities and wife and children don't get in the way of you achieving this this goal (laughs) i think maybe you should set up a gofundme page so you can see if you can get as as many breeders and fucking bags of popcorn from cineworld and that's open delivered to your house if you're in isolation it's good aim high why bother? Fuck Mount Kilimanjaro, you know, swimming around the channel. Just everyone's done that. Everyone's done that. So passive. I'm going to watch 333 films that I've never seen before in the in a year. In a year. What a legend! Yeah. So, Andy, would you care to recap this film? Yep. This film is a two-hour film um, about a man who is a billboard salesman who ends up having to raise his brother's son. I think that's pretty much what happens in this what? film. Oh, um, that's that's the least important character in the whole film. Yeah, I'm only wrong. joking. I'm wrong. only joking. I'm only joking, on. I? You're all waiting for me to slag off the film, aren't you? Eh? Basically, this film is better than the last 80s crap that I had to watch, which was... <laughs> Blood Simple. It's got the same actor in, you know, I don't know what they fancy them or something. So, um, <laughs> yes, this film, I don't know. No. It looked like it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't it? No. No. All right. That's Scrap out that. from Quantum Leap. Fine. Yes. Okay. So, wow. What can I say about this film? So, if you like reading books, long books, um, War and Peace, the Bible, the Quran, etc., you'll probably <laughs> like this film. If you are of the TikTok generation, then don't fucking bother because you will be bored out of your mind. Andy, where do you sit in, in those two categories of people? I watched this film over 10 sittings, um, <laughs> 20, 20 to 25 minutes each, just because I just, I just couldn't, I can't sit there just watching this endless, endless story. You TikTokized this film. Yeah, I TikTok dies it. I just couldn't. I couldn't sit there. Um, I do have some great things to say about the film, so I'm not going to slate it. But gosh, <laughs> doesn't it go on and on and on? Uh, <laughs> essentially, my understanding is, yep, this guy goes off. He comes back. His brother has to raise his son. And his wife's helping him with that. She doesn't seem that pissed off. I'd be fucking raging. I don't even like raising my own children, let alone someone else's. <laughs> they seem all right with that. Then the brother comes back into the life. He doesn't say anything. That's so annoying. He keeps wandering off. They're like Dave on holiday, actually. So that's kind of <laughs> renaissance with me. Um, 
<laughs> and it goes on and on. He builds a relationship with the kid. He shines some shoes. He looks at the vans and the planes and, you know, the American landscape, blah, 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 blah. Then they find the wife. She works in a peep show. You finally find out what the deal is. And essentially, she was a young woman when she had a baby. Then she got post-baby blues. He became an alcoholic. Chained her to the stove. She set fire to the trailer. Then she fucked off. Then he had a breakdown, went into the desert, came back a long time later. And then he decided, yeah, this is the type of woman. I'll, I'll, I'll take my son out of this fabulous environment and <laughs> give him to the, the sort of mini prostitute who's not really a prostitute. And the film ends. That's that. Yeah, man. It's like, gone, baby, gone. Got to take it back to the true mother. No, she's a fucking idiot compared to the other lovely, lovely lady in the she film. She wasn't though. a prostitute. No, but she didn't have her own house. She'll quit that job. Will she? And sort will of she? Move back She'll become a heroin work. addict and that poor little She'll boy move to will LA. be fucked. He was in a nice school. She had a pimp, mate. The pimp will keep her there. What? There's no pimps. He was. He was giving him weird looks in the, in the peak That's show. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, exactly. No, he's like the bouncer. Exactly. He's the bouncer. Whatever. So, um, yeah, that's the film. And what I would say is the best bit about the film is if you just pause it on certain bits, there's really nice shots of America. And that's it. Yeah. That's all I've got to say. There are right? some incredible shots. Aren't there? Even like the kind of just of those shots in the middle of the road that show I've yeah. side. It almost still looks like a Western town. Yeah, I, just, I did I like it. that. But then I thought, that's not really that difficult, is it? Because you just get out on the side of the road, point a camera, and it's there wow. for you. Oh, it's so done. difficult. <laughs> it's so difficult. Is it? Just like, yeah, you less like watching the snooker and going, that doesn't look that hard. Yeah. No, it's not. It Snooker's easy, well hard. Snooker's difficult. the hardest game in the world. But it might just, yes. pointing a camera at the American landscape and then putting a fucking banjo over it and going, oh, oh, Okay, okay, okay. Wow. Let's, let's just let's what stop a, there for a second. What, you give us, oh, honestly. Give us, wait, 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 wait. Idiot. Idiot. Yeah, order, order. And then I went on TikTok and it was brilliant. Tick, so basically, TikTok is a hundred million times better than this. Yeah, because that's because you can't, because you, you have the attention span of like 10 seconds now yeah. because you're and that's, that's why I set up that's why I set up so I've set this up if you like the Bible okay, wait, 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 you will wait, like okay, this wait. film but, if you okay, like TikTok let's... fuck it Dave you know the fact you hadn't seen this film and you've chosen it does that mean that you have connected to this film and you're you don't regret choosing it and you know that was going to be my first point this is something I promise you I won't do too often because I just knew I knew it would it would generate a conversation. So that's why I was, I was 100% confident in that. And I was just like, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to chance it. And yeah, look, I'm just... No, so, wait, does that be, so was it worth that chance for you in your mind? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely love the film because I'm a man the 80s. of intellect. You know, like, I, I can take my time. I'll do a jigsaw puzzle tomorrow. I don't care. <laughs> I'm old school. <laughs> I'll take my time with a jigsaw puzzle. I ain't got I just, time. I've got two kids. I'll sit on a bench in Howard Davis Park and just enjoy the moment. What charity shop did you buy the DVD from, Dave? <laughs> they gave it away. I don't know. One of the 50p. Shops, nah, no, just have it. Get it out of it. <laughs> Not worried. Just... The thing is, is that there's been so much analysis and so many sort of essays written and, you know, long, you know, bits of... Um, you know, writings on this film. So I, when I first saw What the does film, the colour green mean? What does it mean? Yeah, the ending. And they had the same colour T-shirts. That was bad. Oh, because it's all... Oh. Can I just say something? I don't think that we should spend the podcast talking about the contrast in colours and the, the you know, philosophy. Thank you. Thank I you. Think we should talk about... Because what one thing that... When I, I watched this film when I was single, when I first saw it... Mm. Um, all the good old days it sort of felt like a different viewing experience and now i've got kids so yeah i do wow. you feel sort of emotionally attached to this film at all or 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 not not really no um no nah not, mate to be honest nah, no. mate, i'm a geezer <laughs> <laughs> Emotionally right. attached, she's having a fucking laugh, isn't she? Alex. <laughs> so this film was a, a film of three halves for me. You say the films, the films, are, the film's got three halves. It's a countdown joke. Do you not watch Countdown anymore? No, I don't. Sorry. So the first act, uh, I thought I quite like the first act because 
you don't know what the fuck's going on. It's like, oh, where's this going? Exactly. Ah, it's yeah, incredible. Nice, the nice backdrop of uh, of Texas, and then the middle act. I fucking hated the middle act. And what was that? Uh, so I hate so the what, middle act. The middle so act. What about the middle act? Well, it's, that's where it's in LA. I just hated all that. It's boring. But yeah. then the third act, it picked up, and I really enjoyed the third act. Yeah, because it's coming. Sorry, to what, sorry, but uh, Kyle, maybe I missed it. What did you What didn't you like about the second act? All of it. Didn't like any of it. It's boring. Hmm. As in what part though? What, as in what, what are you talking about? What is the middle act in your mind? Where he's in the house when they go to LA. Okay, right. So basically, when they're living in Dean Stockwell's house, is that what you yes. mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh my hey. god. So watching even watching the Super Eight movies, you didn't warm to that film during the Super Eight movie thing. You two no. are soulless. You two He's soulless. the worst father in the world. Oh, I'll just leave my son asleep outside this bank. Oh yeah, I'm a tell you what, I did I quite like the bit where they're on opposite sides of the street. He's yeah, doing that, like that funny dancing. Nice. That, that that was good. Remind me a bit yeah. of Jaws. Remember in Jaws when they like the second viewing sort of made me just feel sorry for that kid, you know. I feel yeah, that's absolutely. sort of uh, Re- you know, it really sort of um, broke my heart. Just you know, yeah. kind of, um, and also you know, see- seeing that scene where the kids are left alone in that apartment, and he listens to that voice message from his yeah. dad. I think um, it's sort of really heartbreaking. It's weird that I didn't have any sort of emotional attachment to the film in the first viewing. Um, um, How long ago was your first viewing? Two thousand and eight, I think, maybe. Oh, so not too. Not too soon, like you were still kind of a, a, a grown up, I guess, in 2008. Yeah, how old are you in 2008? Like 26, yeah, Maybe. about 25, 26. So, um, you know, I, I think I sort of uh, appreciated it more in the second viewing. Um, but I guess just possibly... like that simple, right? Maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, those people listening, every like one minute. <laughs> Andy is doing a thumbs down sign to the camera. <laughs> That's really this, whole podcast. This, this movie is just a how not to raise children, how not to fucking behave in life. <laughs> Could be a documentary. Did you notice how like, overly friendly? Uh, what was her name? Uh, the one that the one that couldn't act at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, Madame Lemonnier. She was like overly friendly with Harry Dean Stanton. Like it was yeah. a bit creepy. Well, uh, I don't know. I d- I don't know. I don't. If Jen's sister started kissing me like that. But he's back. She would have thought he was dead. She would have been grateful because if it wasn't for him, she wouldn't have had her nephew that was sort of almost like a son. So I think she would have liked him, I think. I don't think, I don't think there was anything we, I think, I think what, if anything, she probably realised the sort of, the fragility of, of Harry Dean Stanton's character. So possibly that's why she's, Sort of overly, yeah. because she doesn't want him to run away again, and she doesn't want 100%. to sort of hundred you percent. Know. Gosh, Shafi, it's so nice you're on this podcast because honestly, these other two. I'm I tell heavy. you, fucking yeah. what? If he if he walked back into my life, I'd be like, you fucking dick! Like, what you just left me with your son? So I've had to pay for him taking him to school. I've got my own life, and I'm looking after yours. Are you fucking insane? Get out of this house, you <laughs> cunt! <laughs> I wouldn't be kissing him and going, like, "Thanks for shining my shoes, mate. See you later. Help yourself to the fucking yogurt uh, in the fridge." I bet. You, I bet you, this is never. This never even suggested. But I bet they couldn't have children. I bet that's the scenario yeah. because they couldn't have yeah. children. I guarantee that's the case. They couldn't that, have children. That, that conversation where they're like, "Oh no, what if they, what if you take them away?" We shouldn't just be like, "Here you go. See ya. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See you later." Look, Honestly, you, that, that, that's see, the even point. that. Even hearing that makes me just breaks my heart for that kid. He does, but there you go. I, yeah, I, I don't feel, I, I don't feel too too sorry for this kid. I think he he unfortunately has two parents that just weren't quite right to be parents, but ultimately he has an auntie and uncle. He's like fucking Spider Man, man. He can just move in with his uncle and auntie and have a great life. And then his mum, I think his mum will sort her shit out. I think that's how the film ends. Yeah, the mum is going to get the it together. Every Saturday, be brilliant. Honestly, oh, brilliant. It's the bouncer. Bouncer. It was just talking. Oh, it was just talking. She didn't take a top off. I'd have. I'd do that. I'd sit in a room and chat to a lonely person. So that's exactly what my job is now. That I think about, it. I'd chat on the phone. <laughs> she just talks to lonely guys through the window. There's nothing sexual. Well, I th- I think it could get sexual, right? Because didn't she say in the fir- at the end of the first call? Didn't she say? 
do you want me to take my top off? Yeah. Didn't she said yeah. that. Yeah. Or, no, yeah. She, yeah. she said, so, no, she, get it right. She said, do you mind? That's because she was hot. It was a big, fluffy pink jumper. It was like, do you mind if I take my top off? No, it was like a dress, man. It was a dress. There was nothing underneath what? that. There was nothing oh, underneath that. Yeah. Uh, have you been in LA? It's well hot. So whatever. It's Texas, um, mate. It was Texas. Uh, no, that was LA. That's Texas. That bit's in Texas. Oh, yes. yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was called Paris, Texas. Texas. Oh, yeah. If you think that that's a service where people just go up, go up there and just chat to women across the glass pane, then no one knows more about loneliness than me. No, well, we're, we're, I'm talking about CD strip clubs, not not loneliness, mate. No one knows more than CD strip clubs. <laughs> no one knows more about that than me. I've... Do those things exist in England? I've never ever seen through the glass where you sort of talk to them for, and then you kind of have to put, put a quarter. It's a face-to-face version of Babe Station. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, I think I, I do. I'm sure there are some of those, or there were in Soho, where you could sort of just put the thing down. Remember the end of Blade Two, where he kills the guy. That's how Blade Two ends. But I forgot about you, didn't I? He just stabs him through one of those. I, Wesley Snipes is in the stripper position, <laughs> and then yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, they probably do, but I don't think he tested her, didn't he? He he really pushed on it. He wanted to know whether she's going home with these guys and she wasn't. So if she's just a stripper or whatever, what she's doing isn't too, too bad. You know, in my opinion, he tested her in that first conversation with her. He was like, come on, you go home with the guys. If the money's right. And she was, it was clear that she was like, no, some of my friends might, but I don't. So that was the first test, wasn't it? What was cool about that kind of the whole big monologue at the end to Travis does the camera is seldom on him. It's always on uh, what is it, Jane Nastasia Kinski? What Natasha Kinski? Yeah, Jane. Yeah. So the camera's mostly on her, and to be honest, she, uh, she has very little dialogue throughout the whole film. But but then she follows up with a great monologue as well. She does really well. Like the way she like the reaction acting she does to him talking is brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's spot on. I think. Yeah, and it's like a, it's like silent movie acting at times. Like in the first act, when he's not talking and stuff, you can see that he's deep in thought and stuff. I was actually a bit gutted when he started talking because I thought it was yeah, it was great where he's just reacting to um, yeah. quite a neat dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. To, to like to be fair, that did kind of he did just start talking and it wasn't too big a deal, and they kind of ironed over that. And it almost felt a bit like it reminded me a bit of um, Rain Man for a bit when he like needed the same car and stuff, but. That didn't really make sense, that car scene. I, I was thinking there was going to be something in the car. But, I didn't. I, yeah, that, that, that scene just wasn't necessary at all. For me, I, you know, the way I'm interpreting is that he's as if he's sort of acting quite childlike. So he's sort of learning uh, talk yeah. and, you know, he's, and then he's sort of, you know, what like kids are, they, they're focused on, they want a certain routine, so that means they're sort of, they want most familiar things. Um, nice, nice. It's sort of like a, a child in during those those scenes. So I think, you know, it's just him sort of being, I guess, you know, to sound a bit pretentious here, um, uh, you know, he's like, he's born again, basically. You know? Oh, yeah, no, no. But yeah, well, yeah, I, I still think it's, it, it's about, I think it's two hours and 26 minutes long, but it should be about two hours. I think they needed to cut it down a bit because it is, kind of drawn out like there are yeah there's some of it that it just even like when they're up on the billboard together and stuff and he's like i need to know i need to know and and then nothing's really revealed because you can't reveal it until the end of the film anyway so yeah i would have cut this film down to two hours definitely um andy who yes who is the acting mvp of this film would you say I did quite like the little kid, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it was a good child performance. To be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to the little kid. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely and um, and um, I did, uh, I liked the brother, not the, the guy that found the dude in the desert. I did quite like him. Like, I thought he was quite cool. Um, but yeah, 10 stars to the little kid. Um, mm-hmm. It's all so about the little kid for me, the this fact, movie. The fact you brought up the brother, can mm. we take this opportunity to talk about what our favourite episodes of Quantum Leap are? Absolutely. Yes. All right. We're sick about talking about Paris, Texas. We're sick about 80s films. Dave always chooses 80s films. And now we're sick of it. 
So we're gonna talk about the greatest TV show, even better than the X Files. It's called Quantum Leap. We hope you enjoy our chat about it. It's about Quantum Leap. Um. So, okay. What, what uh, Dave? What's your favorite episode of Quantum Leap? Well, yeah, I'm saying, but I remember loving so many of them, but I would really have to By the way, them for the listeners that, that are just wondering why we're talking about Quantum Leap, is because Dean Stockwell played uh, Al. Al? Yeah. Yeah. Al yeah. In, uh, in, uh, in Quantum Leap. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's and why he played Ziggy, but Ziggy was the computer, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I was about Ziggy to say the, Ziggy. Yeah. I was about, I was about to say Ziggy, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, Dave. What, what's I'm going your... quantum leap wrong. Um, <laughs> my, I think my favourite episode was either the one where he's playing pool. I always like that episode where he's playing pool because then Ziggy the computer would do all the angles for him. Yeah, and the lights bounce off or the balls, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the one episode that I still think I actually imagined in my head where he meets the evil version of himself, and there's. Like a girl oh my God. and a girl one. That is the craziest thing ever, which I still don't think actually happened. Like, that was nuts, that episode. Do you remember, anyone remember that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, where yeah, yeah. like they kiss and their true yeah, forms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was a mad episode. But there was some nice one. There were, it was always some quite wholesome ones and stuff. I like the one where there was a, a girl that was deaf, I think. That was a really nice episode. And there's another one where he he's actually ends up going blind during the episode whilst playing a blind person. That was a really nice. I think he was like a jazz singer or something, but that might be just a ridiculous cliche that I'm saying that. But yeah, Quantum Leap was a lovely show, and I'd happily sit down and watch them all back to back. Actually, I might do that. What about you, Kyle? What's your what's your favorite episode? I can't remember as much as Dave. I, I can't even remember like the Jennifer Aniston one. What? There was what's the Jennifer Aniston one? Holy yeah, shit. where he's he's like a, a guy. With, he plays a guy with no legs. He's in a wheelchair, but he can right. actually walk. But his legs look invisible to everyone else, and he does it right at the end. Jennifer Aniston was like a nurse in that one. Holy shit! Otherwise, I can remember the ones towards the end where like um, Al gets home. No, he gets home, doesn't he? But Al disappears, so he has to go back in. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. So you see, like the future world. Yeah, yeah. the future. Yeah. It's really they were good to not show too much of it. You know, they just kind of kept it quite so. There's a good Vietnam one as well. Weird, because everyone had, like, camo on, but he had, like, oh, camo, right, yeah. the jeans. It's like, wait, did the wardrobe department just fuck it up here? Or what's going on? Mm. That Vietnam episode is followed by the one that you just described before, wasn't it? No. How can you remember this shit, man? It's, like, 30 years ago. No, mm. no, 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 no. I'll tell you what. No, no, no. What, what actually happens is that Sam leaps into his younger self, right? And so he's basically in the farm, and he's trying to, stop his brother from going to vietnam because he's no because he knows he's oh, gonna die that that means a bell and, yeah oh, shit. and then but then the next episode he actually leaps into one of the team in uh of his brother in vietnam and then at the at the very end of the episode what happens is that he he walks past some like some prisoners of war and one of them is actually out in real life wow okay you remember that's that's great writing. That's really, really clever. Uh, Andy, it's just sort of, is Andy, you awake? Or? Yeah, man. I'm just fascinated by your choices. So my episode, uh, so I've had to, I have had to look it up. So it was called The Colour of Truth. Wow. So Sam became um, Jesse Tyler, and he was a black chauffeur to this ageing rich lady, Miss Melanie. Driving Miss Daisy episode. Yeah, she's driving yeah Miss Daisy. and it, it was the first. I remember it like, vividly. It was the first time that I, that I was really fucking young when I watched this, and it was like, I remember thinking like, oh, I'd never really thought of people of different colours before in any real, like, depth as a youngster or whatever. But but this one kind of, like, I was like, oh wow, I didn't know about this, and then like, that's when I started seeing more like looking more into America and seeing like racism and all the rest of it. And then like, it just started coming out more and more on telly from, from that. You just thought this boy that went to nursery with you and went, was all the way from (laughs) from high school to you just had a big tan. Is that what you thought? I I never thought of you as like, you know, oh, this is, you know, if I, I, if I was a little boy, I'd never go, this is my brown mate. I'd go, this is Shafiq. Like you've done, you know, what the fuck. There's quite a few episodes that had to do with race. There's one about, 
um, where he was black and he was running away from the Ku Klux Klan. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, that rings a bell. Right? I think that maybe there's one about the Detroit riots as well, but maybe I'm wrong. I always remember this because like, I, I had a massive row with my mum about Quantum because my mum would make me go to bed before Quantum Leap and then you guys would always talk about it by the lockers the next day and I'd be like, I'd be so heartbroken inside if like my mum had made me like miss Quantum Leap and like it caused major problems in our house Quantum Leap like that and going to Fort Regent because she would never let me go there either. So peak Quantum Leap, how, how old do you think we were? Oh, wow. So, so I think that Jesus. So when was it? Late eighties, early nineties. Like, yeah, you've got the the page in front of you. What year does it say it is? Eighty nine to ninety three. Wow. Right. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't kind to kids our age. So understandably, you'd you know, I think that's what I used to do. I'd what because I we, I used to always have a glass of milk before I go to bed. So I'd just <laughs> spend a long time drinking that glass of milk. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Mikards is the same thing with me now, but that's uh, yeah. Sense. Just so I could watch that episode of Quantum Leap. That might have been the first thing I ever watched that didn't have a happy ending. Didn't have a happy ending? No. He's get stuck he's just stuck forever leaping, isn't he? It came on the screen, mm. it's like Sam never made it home. He saves Al at the end, isn't he? He says, No, you've you've either got a choice. You can either save yourself or save Al, and he ends up saving Al. Yeah, but he never made it home. That's, yeah, that's fine. He can carry on saving people. Yeah. I mean, probably his wife must have left him by now. She's fucking like leaping around for years anyway <laughs> which brings us back to paris texas <laughs> um yeah okay paris so, texas I... <laughs> uh kyle one you know what how i sort of discovered this film was i would in a charity hear, bin i would no i would hear a lot of people talk about the score of this film and then i would and i heard the score before watching this film what what are your thoughts the score of this film it's amazing yeah i'm a big fan of um i'm a massive fan of the guy whose name i forgot rai kuda yeah it was uh yeah i'd know the name but it's like laura's dad he'll he, know all about him because he's into his blues and stuff um, but it's not someone i've ever been into what it brought for me was that it's clear that red dead redemption has massively ripped off a lot of these songs <laughs> yeah wow, wow. But one and two, so it's like it just brought me back to playing that. I mean, that first that first Red Redemption is one of my pretty still my favorite game of all time. Just un- yeah, unreal. Like the second one had, had, had issues, but yeah, that first it just brought me back to playing that. So, <laughs> by the way, the, those people that are listening to this podcast right now, you know, you're probably expecting an in depth analysis on the cinematography and the philosophy of this film, but. Instead, you've got us running down our favourite episodes of Quantum Leap <laughs> <laughs> and also comparing it to Red Dead Redemption. So there you go. Yeah, look, look I do think everyone I should never watch the film, to talk about the film. Yeah, it's great. Just, just we're always going to go off on a weird tangent. Yeah, it is a good film to have watched. And some of the shots are... So I think there's a scene where it's like raining and it's in a car. That was so cool. But it just takes so long to get anywhere. And I know we're not going to talk about this as well, but after this podcast, you should go and go and listen to somebody else talk about the green and then the red, white and blue and then watch the film again and see it. But what a far, I can't even be asked to get into that. But it's probably worth listening and, and then rewatching. So what is the green colour then? What is the, what is the deal with that? Why was that whole last scene in green and they were both wearing green? What's the meaning? Green with envy, that's all I... Ooh. New pastures, green, that's what I was thinking. I don't think we need to. As I said, there are there is so much analysis on this film that you can feel free to sort of Google it yourselves in your own time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't listen to this podcast. Don't waste your time with us. Just Google it. Sound me. Do listen to us. And play Red Dead Redemption. That's right. What I didn't know was that Harry Dean Stanton, this only is like one of our two other films that where he's like the lead actor he's always just been like a like the well, guy in, the, in part of the crew or whatever you know exactly literally like a, alien, a part alien, of the, he's just part part of the, crew, of the yeah. promo crew have you uh kyle have you seen repo man remind me who's in that apparently santon be the rest of us he's like the co-lead in that film i think 
Who else is in it? Uh, uh, El Emilio Estevez. Is it really good? I've heard it's brilliant. Is it, is it good? It's, it's, uh, it's funny. It's, it's, it's like, well, I watched it in the Prince Charles cinema in the square. Um, 1984 as well. And, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's really laughs> um, Can I say one likes. thing about the colour? And then I won't mention the colour at all. Sorry, Andy. Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. So after this podcast, I, I implore all of you, the millions of listeners, all of you, to watch a video or read a review or whatever on the colours because of something I read. So the green is apparently when Travis shows genuine concern or love for his son or family. And at the end, when he's in the oh. car park, his moral epiphany turns the screen permanently to green and blue. He sets aside jealousy and possessiveness and does what's best for those loved ones. Now, I don't agree wow. that that is what's best, but he thinks it is. So I think you should watch this, all of you should watch this film again after doing a bit of investigating in the colours. Because I am. I am I'm definitely going to watch this film again and because I might get more out of it. There was talk that the studios had actually asked, can you put a happy ending into this where he does a U-turn and goes back. But I was like, I was thinking, no, 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 be brave, stick with your guns. His sole mission was to bring his wife and child back together. He doesn't like himself, that's obvious, and he feels they're better off without him. That's the whole point of this film. So if he, 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 he genuinely, I think, is genuinely happy that he's reunited them and... It would have been just so weird if it had been all three of them a happy family. He, his sole purpose was to bring them back together because he felt guilty for being maybe the reason that they were apart. Where do you think he goes then? Does he does he go back to the desert just to ramble around again, or does he drink himself to death? What? Where do you think he goes after this? Mm, interesting. I think he probably just goes on a, a ramble again and just yeah, man. Red cap on, bugger walk off to about. Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he just goes on walk. About. Maybe he comes back in four years again. He is the penitent man that walks the desert. <laughs> comes back in four years and realises that he's proper punching above his weight. <laughs> no, to the max, yeah. I always thought she was a bit too good looking. I like way younger as well. He did look awesome when he sort of grew them starred. And the slick back, he did look awesome. I loved the way, I just loved his look. That's Hollywood magic though, isn't it? I like the older guy and the younger girl. And would never happen in real life, but Hollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we're, using, we're using air quotes by saying magic there. <laughs> Andy, I just yes. hearing Dave talk about that, do you feel any different to uh, the character of Travis or not? Oh, <laughs> he's, he's definitely misguided, but I can't, I, I can't get past it because I'm a parent. At all times, I'm, think, I'm thinking about the kid. So I can't, I can't like, you know, like, Ten years ago, when I'm watching the news, you know all the all the kids come on the news, and um, you know you see them starving, dying, and you watch it, you go, that's terrible. But when you're a parent, holy shit, it takes yeah. on a whole new level. Yeah. So um, no, I think I think he's uh, I think he's actually a bit dangerous. This guy, I think he's completely broken. He's um, doing. I, I, I dare I say it. I know I know he thinks he's doing the right thing, but I think he's a bit selfish. This it, like. Yeah. As the kid fucks off, comes back, nicks him without even asking, takes him, leaves him. It's really dangerous. Like mm. the whole, the whole uh, this kid is in you danger. You know why he did it? Because the way he talks about his own mother is clear. Yeah. He's talking about his past, like being a child. Like he's adored his mom, but his dad was like a dick. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Just yeah. Himself yeah. Like that, yeah. So he's like, right, the yeah. kid should be with his mom. He does the analogy about was the dad always say, "Oh, she's from Paris," like that joke, and then. Yeah, um, it kind of wore thin. He, it's clear that he's like holds his mom on a pedestal, um, and he hates yeah. his dad. So it's a bit like like Oedipus or whatever. But there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. But I just blue velvet. It's better than Blood Simple. But that's, that's my review. <laughs> this film is better than Blood it's not, Simple. It's not better than Blood it's, Simple. It's it's, a, it's two amazing films. Like you're so fortunate that I chose. But Blood Simple is the worst film I've ever seen. Nah. Blood Simple is zero out of ten. Talk about Blood Simple. It's so about boring. boring. Jalaka Two is being the best film we've watched so far, <laughs> which is about a cow that goes mental. It's, it's what? Uh, I thought only idiots would think it was about a cow that goes mental. <laughs> Ooh, it's about the human psyche. Blah blah. It is, blah, mate. Blah. It is, mate. What's mm. this about? 
some drunk idiot that fucks off to the desert and tries yeah. to fuck up his son's future. Exactly, it's exactly what it's about. Well, I'll just nick so, him from school as well. I won't even bother telling the teachers. Unbelievable. Let's talk about the, the third act again, because for me, that's like the, the highlight, obviously, the film. Yes, okay. Yeah, it was great. The, the two monologues back to back, the two great monologues back to back, how often did you get that in a film? Never. They had a cool scene where their faces like come together in the mirror. Yeah, that was really weird, wasn't it? I didn't really get the purpose of that, but it looked quite cool. There's also a great one where, like, he's you can see him in the mirror and she's like sat underneath. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I right, think, yeah. though, she should have recognized him sooner. But that's what she said. She says, Every man's voice sounds like yours. Yeah, that was a cool line, which actually was perfect because I was thinking, How does she not recognize his voice? And then, and it kind of makes sense from a psychological point of view. But, but also, like, always. When he's talking about him, she mm. has no idea who it is. It's only when he starts talking about her that she clicks. I mean, you've got to understand this is Texas, the man. Like, imagine how many drunk guys live in the trailer who fuck their wives so, over. It literally could be any of them. It'd be, it's just how they roll. Wow, I'm glad you said that, yeah. It got dark quite fucking quick, where, like, he's just talking about their life and stuff. It's like, yeah, then yeah. I, I tied her to a fucking oven. <laughs> and she set the house on fire. I was like, whoa, this went from north to six pretty quick. Welcome to Texas. That's how they roll. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Because you were kind of thinking, how bad was it? And it's like, whoa, pretty bad. Is there any theories about why um, the kid talks about the Big Bang in the car? Like, or is that just the same old theme throughout, you know, beginning of life, where did we all start, blah, 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 blah? Yeah, probably what you were saying about new beginnings and stuff, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Maybe to be like, to show how hard the questions are, like, if a kid asks, why did you leave? Why did mummy leave? You've got more chance of answering those questions than you do these questions. But I don't know. It's just, it's hard, isn't it? You know, the kid might be fascinated with the Big Bang and all that shit, but it's just so beyond our comprehension. It doesn't matter too much. But then how, why did mummy run away? Why did you run away? Okay, so let's uh, hear everyone's one-word review of this film. It's the one-word review, the one-word review. Except for Dave, who spends 15 minutes talking about being so gritty. Kyle, what is your one-word review? I think if Nastasia Kinski wasn't in this film, I probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to say... It's the one-word review. The one-word review. Jane. Jane? <laughs> what? Jane, Jane. Andy, what is your one word review? So, guys, my one word review is protracted. Okay. P R O T R A C T E D. Protracted. What does that mean? What's the definition of the that word? That means protracted? lasting for a long time or longer than expected or usual. A bit like this bit that I'm doing now. I can't on have and a protracted on and on conversation. And on. I can't have a protracted conversation. Protracted. I try okay, your yeah. shoes. I'm looking at the planes. La, 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 la. I'm up looking at a billboard. Boring, boring, boring. Protracted. Um, okay. Dave, what's your one-word review? What's your one-word review, please? <laughs> My one-word review is America. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh that's divisive, oh, isn't it? We've just lost... Just lost a massive mm. portion of our audience there, Shafi. Oh, going to have to explain that. Yeah. Motherfucking big. Okay, Dave, what's your uh, one word review of this film? America. Fuck that. yeah. Running around <laughs> to say the motherfucking day, yeah. Uh, okay, so my one word review of this film is religion. Religion? Yeah, man. Religion? Wow. It comes out of the desert. Well, how come you're not going on your your long tirade about and just mumbling about the film? I am. I'm going to go on one. I'm going to go off on one. So for me, this is all about religion. He's Jesus. He comes out of the desert after four years. Jesus came out after 40 days. He grows a beard. He looks like Jesus. He does. He's a penitent man. He does his penance. He's... He wants his sins forgiven. So he is, that's all this is. That's that, that whole film. You, all you need is that first scene and the last scene. The rest I don't of the think film Jesus went filler. to a peep show. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus went a lot of time with prostitutes. Well, you've never seen Jesus full stop, mate. Well, I know, mate. Yeah. Well, there's a reason for that, but let's not get into that. 
he did spend time with prostitutes and he fed the needy. All the stuff that he does, he goes on a journey. But he, he didn't drive a car. Choose- he never went oh, to LA. Oh, yeah, it was a donkey, wasn't it? The same thing. Donkey, I'm pretty sure Jesus car. never wore a MAGA baseball hat either. <laughs> so he's, he is the second coming, basically. No, he's what not. A load he's of just, bollocks. He is a penitent man that comes out of the desert. If you walk into the desert, you spend four years bollocks. in the desert, you become... I went to the desert. Again? I went June buggy in the desert. It doesn't make me Jesus. Yeah, but you didn't spend four years out there. He, well, not even did he. He did. He was four years in the desert. I'm, so I'm talking about Jesus. He, oh, yeah, 40 days. Jesus didn't yeah. fuck off for four years. He is a penitent Absolute man. Absolute nonsense. He walks into Absolute the desert Absolute nonsense. Years. So one you should say that if you look at the sea for 24 hours, it cleanses your soul. You become a new man. He did his penance in four years in the desert and then atones for his sins by uniting his estranged child with the estranged mother. He's an angel. It's all religious. Everything. It's better one man repents and goes to heaven than a thousand men don't repent. It's all about redemption. Christianity is all about making mistakes. The original sin. We sin, we are forgiven, we repent, and that's it. Oh, I've got a theology A level. Look at me. I remember in chapter five of the Bible where Jesus strapped uh, Mary to the stove and then he went down the temple. That got that was pretty bad. I actually went to university and did theology at university. You went to university for three days. (laughs) Exactly. Someone threw your CDs out the window and you had to come home crying. (laughs) <laughs> you did half a split and had to fly back to Jersey because you freaked out. Like the kids in the mid 90s. And had a sp- ah, split. I'm freaking out. Room. I'm freaking and I got out. fucking ah. thrown out of pools. That was even anyway. <laughs> like, That's whatever. True story. Yeah. But really? I'd already left. So came on and sparked up a fatty from Batty. And we got busted. The person upstairs dubbed a sip. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. The girl upstairs dubbed a sip. What the fuck? Most because there was no smoking at all because it was kind of an old fashioned hall. We got busted. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have let him if I was just there normally. But yeah, we got busted by Gallus. Like someone dogged us in. I'm saying it's like what the fuck, man. So what's your summary? Basically, Jesus and cowboy boots. What what? I'm saying, I'm saying it's a it's a religious journey. I know, it's a pilgrimage. I know. I, I redemption. It's all about redemption. So what, what's the yeah. man on the bridge then, Dave? Who's the man on the bridge? That's. Peter at the gate. No. Okay. No. To, no. To be fair, oh, I think the man Peter at the gate. Wowza. Maybe this no. has got some legs. Go on. <laughs> well, actually, uh, what does Paris, Texas, signify in the religion, in the religious context? Dante's Inferno, the Holy Trinity. Well, <laughs> like to be honest, maybe the guy on the bridge is just. Because the Eiffel Tower is just a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You're really stretching this one. Oh, you're the one that's got a triangle literally behind you. So, And to be, to, <laughs> to be honest, it, babe, no one can see it. So fucking no one knows you're about, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about the order. <laughs> I love this descent into chaos. Dave said one word. We all just attacked him for 20 minutes. Kyle's been particularly Larry tonight. <laughs> so Larry. So, look, I think... I think the man on the bridge might have been what he could have become. That's that's hell. That's his hell. He might wow. have actually he might have actually gone that far that he was completely lunatic, he was just shouting from on the street corners and stuff. So that was hell. He may have gone all the way to the depths of hell. That's how that's low his breakdown could have been. That's my opinion on the guy on the bridge. He didn't quite go that mental where there's no return. Yeah. But he did return. He came out of the desert. He walks Love again. Him. So, Shuffy, your choice is next. I'm really excited to, to know about this, by the way. I have no idea what it's going to be. I hope it's animated. What is your choice? Oh, it's not animated. Oh, so it's a disappointment. Oh, oh, don't, please don't make it be a massively scary one. No, I've, scary I've got one. an a- animated film in the pipe. So. Um, but the mm. film that I have chosen for everyone to watch is... Should we get a drum roll? It's a film called... The Wailing. Oh, God. Never heard why of that. Why do you have to make that reaction? Oh, it's a Moby Dick film. Is that that, is that that South Korean horror film directed by Nathan Hill Shin? Bust his finger first. <laughs> Check you out. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. 
Who are the ice? So players? listen, th- listen. Oh, Shaf, I can't watch this. That, that, no way, mate. That's too scary. Look at listen, this. Listen, 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 listen. I just want to say something. The film oh, is two and a half hours long. Oh, oh but I And I know I'm asking a lot for you guys to do this, but if you could try and watch it all in one sitting, Okay, I will yeah, do that I think for you. you, will, you yeah, okay. I think you're going to get a different experience if you if you break up the viewing. So okay. try and watch it all in one sitting, if you can. The day's gone. The day's gone. Cool. All right. So we have a new email address, and the email address is whodroppedthepopcorn at gmail.com. So listeners, if you have any comments about this episode or any other episodes, you want to give us any feedback, good or bad, please uh, send us an email, ping us, let us know who you are and what you think. And uh, is there any socials you guys want to share? Or... We've got an Instagram as well. Just search who dropped the popcorn Instagram. Okay. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Shaf1. That's the, that's S-H-A-F-O-N-E. All right. Well, thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.